Magic's been around for 20 years. It has? 20th anniversary this year? Yeah, so we're all celebrating. Uh, there's a lot of fun products and a lot of cool promos that we're doing. Everything uh, all around the 20th anniversary for Magic the Gathering. Yep. And we have a special segment set up. Okay, yes we do. Now, Mark, <laughs> you're, 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 no, you're no stranger to, uh, to talking about Magic. You have a podcast, you write an article, you've written it for yep. a really long time, and your history goes deep with Magic. You probably know the game better than most people on the planet. So we're going to tap into you here, but you know what? Okay. 20 years, we don't have all day, right? Okay. We can't talk about it forever. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you one minute per year. So this is going to take 20 minutes, okay. and we're going to try to cage Mark into this one-minute segment of each one. Okay. And the way it's going to work is when the next year's up, I'm going to say the year, and you've got to stop talking about that whatever year we were on and move on to the next. Are you okay. feeling ready for this? I uh Okay. Okay. I'm ready. <laughs> All right. So we're starting with 1993. 1993. Go. Okay. So 1993 is the year Magic was released. Uh, first premiered at Origins, and then was on sale for the first time at Gen Con. It was a smash hit at Gen Con. It sold out in days. It's everything people were talking about. So Alpha came out. Then shortly after that, Beta came out. Then shortly after that, Unlimited came out, which was a whiteboard version of it. Uh, Beta added a few cards that were missed in Alpha, and then late in the year, Arabian Nights managed to come out. Now, um, the original Alpha had in it all the cards except for Circle Protection Black and Volcanic Island and one copy of each basic land that got added to get the things over 300 for beta. Um, Arabian Nights was the first expansion that we did not expect to happen right away because Alpha sold out. We made enough cards for six months, sold out in a week. Beta made enough cards for a week, sold out for six months, sold out in a week. And then Arabian Nights had to get rushed into production, and Richard Garfield quickly did it. The, the flavor text was done in a night, and um, originally it was going to have a different back, but the last minute, Scapolias convinced everybody that was a mistake. Don't change the back, so they kept the same magic back. And then Arabian Nights premiered right after Unlimited in December to finish out the year of 1993. 1994. In 1994 was a bangful year for lots of releases. There was Antiquities, Revised, Legends, The Dark, Fallen Empires. Uh, it was the year the Duels Convocation first came out. Later ah. to be renamed the Duels Convocation International, or DCI. Um, that is when we introduced 60 card minimums. The game first started with the 40 card minimum. Also, we introduced the idea of four card limits. Before that, you could play with as many cards as you wanted. That was broken, so they introduced four card limits. Um, also, we introduced a ban and restricted list because ah. we were causing problems with Magic. And so, for the first time, the Power Nine got restricted, um, and stuff like uh, Dingus Egg and Orchestra or Flame got, <laughs> got restricted because it was dangerous. Um, also, that was the year of the first Worlds in which Zach Dolan became the very first World Championship. That was also held at Gen Con. Uh, his car broke down on the way there, but he hitched a ride and he got there, wow. and he went on to beat Patron the Straight from France to be the first ever Magic World Champion. Um, 1995. 1995. 1995 was the year that Ice Age came out, Chronicles came out, Fourth Edition came out, Homelands came out. Um, for the first time ever, we introduced the idea of formats. Before that, there was just magic, but we introduced the idea of type two. Magic as we knew it became type one, uh, we now call vintage, and type two is what we now call standard. But magic for the first time ever had a format in which things rotated out. That caused big controversy at the time, but obviously went on to be a pretty popular thing. Um, also, because of Chronicles and 4th Edition, uh, there was a big, people were very concerned the cards were getting undercut. So we introduced what's called the reserve list, which to this day still keeps us from printing a lot of the early cards. Um, also, uh, in 1995, I got hired. Yay. And a lot of the people, uh, Bill Rose, and a lot of the, the sort of old timers at Wizards was the start of what I call the second wave of R&D, got hired in 1995. Um, Oh, I got more. Uh, you got okay, 10 so, uh, seconds. <laughs> also this year, that is the first time we did a, a, a large set. Both, I, I, I mean, we had done Legends the year before, but Ice Age, we introduced the idea of doing limited play, and for the first time ever, limited play was part of Magic. 1996. In 1996, only two sets came out in 1996. Alliances came out in 96, and um, Mirage. In fact, it was a long gap before Alliances came out. But Alliances was the first ever uh, pre-release in which there was, you know, we had an Ice Age had a pre-release in which there was one pre-release. But Alliance was the first time we had a pre-release in many locations. Um, Mirage is the start of what I call the second age of magic design in which we started doing block design. So Mirage was the first time that we, from a design standpoint, started designing for Limited. Ice Age was the first time we played Limited, but the first time that we designed for it was Mirage. A great year. Um, also, it was the first year of the Pro Tour um, Michael Acanto won the very first Pro Tour in New York. Uh, we had a blizzard which made us start late, but uh, that was the very first year of the Pro Tour. Um, we got introduced, Hammer won the second Pro Tour in uh, Los Angeles. Ula Rade uh, won the third Pro Tour in Columbus. That year at Worlds, Tom Champagne from Australia beat Mark Justice in the finals to become um, 
the first Australian ever to win a Pro Tour or a World. 1997. 1997 had Visions, had Fifth Edition, had Weatherlight, had Portal, had Tempest. Um, Portal was us introducing a new simple to play magic set that was a lot simpler, took a lot of the rules out. There was no instance, there was no artifacts, no enchantments. Um, we also started the Weatherlight Saga, which was a story that we ran for many years, which introduced the crew of the Weatherlight and Gerard and Sisse and Karn and all sorts of characters. Um, uh, Fifth edition, we, for the first time, had a giant large set, one of the largest sets we've ever done, uh, with, I believe, over 400 cards in the set. Um, that was the year that we introduced pre-constructed decks. That was the year we had Vanguard, which was a product that you started with these cards in play, and they affected your starting hand size. We did pre-release cards for the very first time. The first Grand Prix ever held here in Amsterdam. We held the first Grand Prix ever. Uh, the Pro Tour appeared on ESPN2 that year. For the first time ever, people could see the Pro Tour on television. Um, it was a year chock full of exciting sets. Weatherlight was the first time we ever did a graveyard set. Um, and Tempest. 1998. Uh, 1998, uh, Stronghold, Exodus, uh, Urza's Saga, uh, Portal Second Age, which we did a second portal. Um, Unglued, one of my favorite all times, first Silver Border set ever appeared in that year. Um, there's a, uh, as of Exodus, we introduced rarity symbols, we introduced collector numbers for the first time. Um, and like I said, we were telling the story, and so for the first time, the characters uh, introduced from the previous year, Exodus and um, Visions, uh, that's Exodus and Stronghold, were telling a story. Um, Urza Saga was the year we broke magic. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> we made a few mistakes, and things kind of broke. Uh, there was a Pro Tour that year that a lot of people claim was the most the craziest Pro Tour ever as far as the most, you know, the most powerful decks in which games were ending on turn one, sometimes <laughs> late, you know, turn two. Um, and it was also a year in which we, uh, we um, put out a lot of, um, we changed the way that we thought about the sets. The Urza Saga was a year in which we really, we did a lot more experimentation. 1999. Uh, 1999 was the year that Urza's Legacy came out, Sixth Edition came out, Urza's Destiny came out, Mercadian Mass came out, uh, Portal Three Kingdoms, which was us taking Portal and bringing it to the Asian market, in which we told a classic story. Um, those cards are very, very hard to get now because we did not produce a lot of them. And, and there's a lot of cards from that set that have gone on to be um, very, very hard to get. Um, that is the year in which um, premium cards got introduced in Urza's Legacy. So uh, what we, a lot of people call foil cards got introduced for the first time. And that was 6th edition. So he introduced 6th edition rules. The stack was introduced. Um, and that caused all sorts of controversy and people up in arms that we added a stack and damage went on the stack and all these things changed. The artifact tapped and didn't work anymore. Didn't end up ending that, the game. It did not end the game. <laughs> also, that was the final issue of the duelist happened that year. The duelist had started back in 94 and they finished for the first time in 99. Um, and also it was a year in which um, we saw a, a Mercadian Masks started, uh, and that was uh, a depowering us trying to fix the year for the saga. In 2000 uh, was the year of Nemesis, Prophecy, Invasion. It's the start of what I call the third age of design, in which we started doing um, themes for our blocks. So Invasion was all about a multicolored theme, and so before that we hadn't really done, it was kind of just like, there's two new mechanics and a bunch of stuff and we're going to do it. And while we had done some story stuff, we, we were very focused that year. Invasion was like, we're doing multicolor and we're doing things that tie into multicolor, and it was all about playing lots of gold cards. Um, also that year was the first year that we um, had, what else did we do that year? We did, um, this is hard. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe you still have breath left. Um, so this is the year that we um, started focusing on um, thinking long-term about how we, we set up the block. So Invasion did something that will happen next year in which we mm. withheld something for the first time. We didn't do enemy gold cards to allow us to set up something that would happen later in the block. And so it was the first time that we sort of had planned ahead. A little foreshadowing. Uh, also, uh, Randy Buehler started that year. Okay. 2001 was the year of Plane Shift, Apocalypse, 7th Edition, Odyssey. Um, it's the year that we ended the Weatherlight Saga story that we had begun many years before. Uh, the Frexians invaded. A lot of people don't know that Invasion was about Invasion, surprisingly. but. Uh, <laughs> The Frexians invaded, thanks to Gerard and Urza, and they managed to defeat them, and the Frexians were gone, and we'll never see them again. They've been destroyed, <laughs> or so we would think. Um, also that year with Apocalypse, we definitely introduced the idea of a third set with a, a third set spin. We had saved the enemy cards, and we had done that. Apocalypse was very successful. And a lot of ways, the block plans that would come later, the invasion block was the first that set up the idea of, of doing block planning. Uh, and what else happened that year? Uh, Odyssey happened that year, so that's the year we did a graveyard for the first time. Um, stuff like Threshold, Flashback was premiered that year. Um, and that was definitely a year where we 
Um, we, we continue the theme that we started Invasion of trying to have themes for the year, and the whole year was about the graveyard, and um, that's the idea. 2002. We, 2002 was the year of Torment, Judgment, Onslaught. Um, Torment was the first set ever in which we unbalanced the colors and it was weighted toward black. In Judgment, we balanced back toward white and green, and so we had a set that wasn't quite balanced in color. Um, Onslaught was the first time we did the tribal, of, of us experimenting with the tribal theme. We had done it before Magic and Doses, but finally we had done it as a big black thing. It became very popular. We also introduced Morph for the very first time, which was a mechanic that would go on to be a giantly popular mechanic. Um, Magic Online premiered in 2002. Ooh, good year. Um, and MagicTheGathering.com premiered in hey, 2002. Hey, the internet. My, including Making Magic, the column that I still write to this day. Um, it definitely was a year of us uh, getting digital. I think it's, it's a year where Magic kind of entered the digital scene, even though 2002 a little late for that, but um, that's Better really late the than year ever. Uh, where we marked ourselves with both Magic Online and MagicAdam.com. Um, and uh, what else? Uh, it's also the year that we um, experimented with trying to do different things with... Um, 2003. Uh, oh, 2003. 2003 was uh, the year of Legions, uh, which was the first ever all-creature set in which we um, had a set of everything being the same. We would try that again once later. Uh, oh, that was creatures. Um, Apocalypse, not Apocalypse, Judge, no, the Scourge. Scourge was a dragon set, but not really. Uh, we sold it as a dragon set, but there were only seven dragons in it. I think there was only 13 cards that reference dragons. Tribal dragons. Um, it, was, it was the end of a tribal block, and, well, uh, we will... Anyway, one, one day we'll do a much better dragon set. Uh, eighth edition came out. Eighth edition was famous for introducing the new card frames, yes. and uh, that caused quite the uproar. Um, we tried to make the frames. We had to change them to, for our printing process, um, and we wanted them to be easier to read, and mm -hmm. so we ended up changing up. That caused a lot of controversy. Uh, Mirrodin came out that year, which was introducing to an artifact block and to uh, the, the plan of Mirrodin, uh, which we would later come back to uh, years later. It was the uh, 10th anniversary of Magic, and we celebrated uh, our first big anniversary. We 2004. 2004 was the year of Dark Steel. You're halfway done, by uh, the way. Halfway done. Uh, Dark Steel, <laughs> Fifth Dawn, Unhinged, Champions Kamigawa. So Dark Steel was us continuing the theme of um, of Mirrodin, which was making broken cards. Uh, we did more of that. <laughs> As it turned uh, out. And we, uh, I think Dark Steel's thing that broke the camel's back. We ended up breaking standard pretty badly. We banned, I believe, uh, seven cards. Uh, eight cards. We banned all eight the cards. Lands. We yeah. banned all the lands. Six lands and two other cards. Um, Fifth Dawn was us. Uh, we had to make a sharp right turn because we couldn't do what we'd done before. We entered us five color into the artifact block. It's the first time that we ever used Aaron Forsyth. It's where he had been doing the website up to that point, and we brought him onto this uh, to do a set so he could write an article about it. He did so good, we brought him in R&D, and now he's my boss. Um, and uh, Unhinged was us bringing back the uh, Silver Border set. We tried to do things a little crazier, and we brought some new stuff and changed up how things worked. I'm sure um, you were then, happy about that one. Oh, I was very happy about that one. Uh, 2005. Uh, 2005. 2005, Betrayers of Kamigawa, Saviors of Kamigawa, 9th edition, and Ravnica. Um, so Betrayers and Sa Saviors was us finishing up with what happened with uh, the Kamigawa block, mm -hmm. which was us doing top-down Japanese flavor. Um, it was the first us, us trying to do top-down. We would later get better at it, but uh, as a first attempt, we didn't succeed all that well. Um, uh, Ravnica was the start of I call the fourth the fourth stage of magic design is us doing block planning where we plan out the whole block. The idea of four, three, and three where we had uh, these guilds but only four of them showed up. People thought it was crazy because how can you only have four of the ten combinations in the first set? But it worked out. People were very popular. Oh, Obviously, they go on. love that set. Um, also, the Pro Tour Hall of Fame started that year. Uh, and I believe it's so see. John Finkel, Darwin Castle, Ularade, um, Tommy Hovey, and Alan Comer got uh, inducted in the very first year to become the first five people inducted to the Pro Tour Hall of Fame. Um, what else? Uh, uh, what else happened that year? I mean, well, I you don't need to worry about it. 2006. 2006. Uh, 2006 was Guild Pack, Dissension. Uh, so we finished out the Ravnica year. So we had three more uh, sets uh, with Guild Pack. Finishing and, one and of the, the most popular guilds, blocks Ascension. ever. Yes, and that became a very, very popular block. Uh, that draft became a very popular draft. Yep. Um, after that, we did Cold Snap, which was the missing Ice Age set that we found <laughs> in a file cabinet. The people got really mad because they thought we were somehow misleading them rather than having our tongue planted firmly in our cheek. Um, we talked about that being a fourth Ravnica set, but we talked ourselves out of it. Instead, it did Cold Snap, the missing set. 
We then did Time Spiral, which was a set in which we went back. It was a nostalgia block, a, yes. a block about time. We did what we called the Time Shifted Sheet, where we had 121 cards from the past. Um, that set was chock full of stuff. I think we had 12 to 14 mechanics, depending on how you want to count them. Um, we had 121 time shift of bonus sheet. It was one of the most complex things. I remember one the, of the first most time I drafted it. Done. I was a little confused. 2008. 2008. Um, 2007. 2007. Uh, that's the year the Planner Chaos came out. That was the year that we, that was the alternate present set where we shook up the, the color wheel and did crazy things like damnation and tried different things in different colors. That was followed by Future Sight. Uh, a set I'm very proud of, but uh, a set that had 48 mechanics in it. Where Magic before that had 56, and we had 48. Uh, it showed the future. We had shift, time shifted, uh, time shifted cards in last year in Time Spiral, then in Planar Chaos, and Future Sight had cards from the future. Yes. And from not, every once in a while, we see those cards from the future showing up. Uh, there's a card from the future showing up in Theros, by the way. Uh, after that, with 10th edition, and then we had Lorwyn. Lorwyn was us doing another tribal set. Um, and introducing a new block that wasn't a large, small, small structure, the first time we'd ever done that. Also introduced the first dual decks with elves versus goblins, which was the first time we introduced the concept of the dual decks. Um, Lorwyn was us going back and rediscovering the idea of a tribal block. Um, and 2008. We were, and we were setting up a massive change. So we did two mini blocks to make up a large block, which was large, small, and then large, small. So the second small set was Morning Tide. That paired up with Lorwyn. Instead of doing a tribal base, instead of doing a, a race based thing, we did a class based tribal set. Uh -huh which confused everybody. Uh, then we did Shadowmore, which was a large set in the spring, which we had never done before. That was a set all about hybrid. Uh, the sets were at 50% hybrid. We had never turned up hybrid that high before. It had only appeared before in Little Doses and Ravnica. Then we did Eventide, which is the parallel to Morning Tide, in which we did the enemy colors of hybrid. Mm -hmm. uh, that set had mixed reviews, but uh, it uh, had a had retrace and a few, a few things people like to this day. Uh, then the end of the year, we did Shards of Alara, in which we introduced another gold set, but this time with a, uh, a Shards, a three set, theme to it, about five worlds. There were five different worlds between Grixis and Bent and Naya and Esper and, which one did I forget? And, uh, uh, what did I forget? One of the other ones. Uh, we introduced From the Vault Dragons for the, or From the Vault got introduced. The very first From the Vault was 2009. From the Vault Dragons. 2009 was a year of Conflux, which was, we started with three color, but went to crazy five color. Um, and Nicole Bolas got introduced to the world, or reintroduced to the world. Um, and then we did a Laura Reborn, which was another gimmick set in which uh, Legions, all the cards were creatures. Uh, Laura Reborn, all the cards were gold cards. Every single card was a gold <laughs> card. Uh, and that card was a little crazy. It had Cascade, which ended up being a broken mechanic. Um, and then after that, we had Magic 2010, which reset what the core set was all about. Uh, Aaron Forsyth had this great idea. It, we started introducing new cards for the first time. We started bringing Resonant back to the core set. It really was a giant shakeup and advanced where Magic is today. After Magic 2010, we had Plane Chase. Uh, then we had Zendikar. Zendikar was the land set that no one believed would work as a land set, but it turned out to be very popular. It introduced Landfall. Uh, it brought back Kicker. Uh, it had all sorts of uh, land-centric things. It was a very speedy environment. Um, uh, plane chess, which I, I, I mentioned real briefly, had a whole different play experiences where you jump from set to set. 2010. 2010 had a World Wake, which was, it was the next set after Zendikar, in which the land wake up and we had attacking lands. The set had a very famous card called Jace the Mind Sculptor. It sure did. That, that cracked everything in half. We had a Planeswalker. Oh, I didn't mention before, Lorwyn introduced the Planeswalker <laughs> oh, yeah. the previous year. Uh, but Planeswalker started being put in every single set this year, uh, and Jace was the first, and only so far, uh, four ability play Planeswalker. Um, we also had Rise of the Drazi, where for the first time we had we stopped and we had a, a reset. It was a it was a spring set that started. You, you just drafted the fall set, and it was oh, a large and, and set. And I did. And it was a very very popular for the limited players because it was crazy and different, and giant creatures were attacking. And that you actually had commons that were like eight and, eight mana and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, also, Magic 2011 came out. We introduced Arch Enemy, which was a whole other way to play Magic. Mini on one. Um, Scars of Mirrodin came out, which is the start of the fifth age of design, in which we integrated and had more story and flavor mixed in. Uh, we are back for in Mirrodin, but oh no, the Frexans, they weren't dead! 2011. And they attacked! They attacked in Mirrodin, <laughs> Mirrodin the Siege. We came to war, in which the Frexans were fighting the um, the Mirrodins for the, who would who would win? And we, for the first time ever, didn't tell you the name of the third set. Was it going to be New Frexia, or was it going to be Mirrodin Pure? You didn't know. And then we had our first, we did our first experience ever at a, a pre-release, where you had to pick yourself 
side, at the perimeter of the team, decide which side you're going to fight for. And it ended up being like 50.1 to 49.9 or something really close <laughs> like that. But anyway, Phyrexia won. It was New Phyrexia. And we had a, a large set in which we watched New Phyrexia decimate Mirrodin. And Mirrodin is gone, uh, other than a few rebels holding out. Um, after that, we had Magic 2010. We introduced Commander, which became a very popular format. But it was the very first time we made decks. It was so popular that we started deciding we'd make Commander a regular thing rather than just a one-time thing. Also, Innistrad came out. Uh, Innistrad yes. was doing horror for the first time, doing a, a themed top-down set all about gothic horror. And that was something I've been wanting to do since the Odyssey. 2012. 2012. Uh, Dark Ascension was the follow-up to Innistrad. Uh, uh, Innistrad introduced double-faced cards that we had never done before. People were up in arms. How could you do that? They ended up being very popular. Somehow the game survived The again. game survived. Uh, we then did Abyssin Restored, which was another reboot. Uh, Abyssin had been trapped in the Hell Vault, and at the pre-release, you had a freer from the Hell Vault. It was a big experience. And then it changed everything, and so it was a new experience, a new draft, and now the monsters were fleeing, and the angels were in charge, and things were different. Um, after that was Magic 2013. Then we went back to Plane Chase for the next Plane Chase. Uh, and then we went return to Ravnica. People had loved Ravnica, so we went back to Ravnica. Except this year we did it a little bit differently. We did instead of large, small, small, four, three, three, we did large, large, small, five, five, ten, which was something completely different that we had never done before. Uh, return to Ravnica had five of the guilds, uh, and we for the first time had boxes of pre-releases, and we, we we made you choose your guild, and there was factioning online, and. That leads us into 2013. So we had Gay Crash, which are the other five sets. Uh, it's the first time ever that I handed off the set to somebody else, mid-design, two of us designed the set. Um, Dragon's Maze was a set in which um, all 10 guilds were playing, and you could draft all three sets. Uh, a few years back, we had changed the drafting order, so you went backwards, so now you did Dragon Maze first. And then after Dragon's Maze was Modern Masters, in which we brought back all these old cards from Modern to get people their hands on Modern. And that was crazy popular. People could draft and do all sorts of cool things. Then Magic 2014 came out, and we had a competition, a Magic World Cup, and we had a Magic Champion, a uh, World Magic Cup, and we had the Magic Championships. Theros comes, well, would later come out, which would be a set all about Greek mythology. And we would do a policy thing called 20 Minutes of Magic in 20 minutes. <laughs> 20 years of Magic. You did it. Oh. Wow, you must be tired after that. I know you like to talk, but come on, man. That is ridiculous. 20 years. And you know what? I miss so, so much. That was fantastic. Thank you for that. Are you okay? okay? Breathing? I am breathing. Breathing I'm normally. Dead. We'll get you some water in just a minute. Maybe even some ice cream if you're lucky. Ooh, I hear free ice cream. Yeah.